Did you know that the richest country in Europe and in fact the country with the highest GDP per capita in the entire world is Luxembourg? Yes, the small landlocked nation wedged between Belgium, France and Germany has the most successful economy globally by many metrics. While one might initially guess countries like Switzerland, Germany or Ireland top the wealth rankings in Europe, Luxembourg outshines them all. Its economy can be summed up as a place where unemployment is virtually non-existent and the average monthly salary of over $5,800 is almost enough for an all-inclusive year-long Caribbean vacation. With such seductive working conditions and a future of virtually assured economic prosperity, it is no wonder nearly half of Luxembourg's population consists of immigrants from other European nations. After all, who would want to miss the opportunity to live in the world's most prosperous country and a virtually guaranteed path to a life of abundance? The humble origins of a hidden gem. Luxembourg has not always been a rich, prosperous nation. In fact, for most of its early history, it was just a tiny, unremarkable feudal territory ruled by obscure counts and dukes. In the 10th century, Luxembourg's story began with a modest fortification known as Lusselenburg, or Little Castle. Perched atop a rocky outcrop, this humble fortress would lay the foundation for a nation's identity. Over the centuries, successful rulers fortified and expanded the castle, transforming it into an impregnable stronghold dubbed the Gibraltar of the North. As the fortress grew in prominence, a town gradually emerged around its walls, giving birth to a small but strategic state. Luxembourg's location made it a coveted prize, caught in the tug of war between the powerful forces of France, Germany and the Netherlands. Each dynasty left its mark, from the Bourbons and Habsburgs to the Hohenzollerns, strengthening the fortress and cementing its reputation as one of Europe's most formidable. The tumultuous years witnessed the rise and fall of the illustrious House of Luxembourg, whose descendants ascended to the thrones of the Holy Roman Empire and the Kingdom of Bohemia. Yet, the extinction of this dynasty plunged the nation into uncertainty, as it passed from the hands of Burgundians to the Habsburgs and eventually to the French during the Revolutionary Era. The 19th century ushered in a pivotal chapter, as the Congress of Vienna elevated Luxembourg to the status of a Grand Duchy, placing it under the rule of the Dutch monarch. However, this arrangement was complex, with Luxembourg caught between allegiance to the Netherlands and strategic importance to Prussia. The turmoil of the Belgian Revolution and the Luxembourg Crisis of 1867 tested the nation's resilience, yet it emerged victorious with its independence and neutrality guaranteed by the Treaty of London. This hard-won victory paved the way for Luxembourg to forge its identity and cultivate national pride. As the 20th century dawned, Luxembourg was embroiled in the crucible of two world wars. The First World War brought German occupation, sparking anti-German sentiment and fueling momentum for the abolition of the monarchy. The Second World War brought even greater devastation, as Nazi Germany annexed Luxembourg. Its citizens were conscripted into the German army, enduring forced labor, deportation and the horrors of concentration camps. Yet, in the face of adversity, the indomitable spirit of the Luxembourgish people shone through. Movements like the Spengels Krisch, War of the Pins, and Drymol Letzburgokisch, three times Luxembourgish, exemplified their defiance against Nazi oppression, asserting their distinct identity and language. The post-war era ushered in a remarkable transformation as Luxembourg abandoned neutrality, embracing European integration by joining NATO, the United Nations, and the European coal and steel community. Its decision to join the Benelux Customs Union paved the way for unprecedented economic growth. However, it was was an unexpected twist of fate that truly unleashed Luxembourg's fortunes. You see, buried underneath the nation's unassuming soil lay thick veins of iron ore, the critical ingredient for a revolutionary new metal called steel that was about to append modern society. The people living there knew nothing about the underground riches beneath their feet. It took an accidental discovery in 963 AD for the first hint of Luxembourg's geological jackpot to be unearthed. That's when an unsuspecting count named Siegfry traded some land to monks for an old Roman fort called Lucilin Burhuk. On the surface, it seemed a regular transaction between nobility and clergy. But unbeknownst to Siegfried, the deed granted his family control over terrain covering a vast buried cachet of iron ore, reserves that would make his descendants immensely wealthy once Steele's potential was realized. Over the centuries, Siegfried's family grew into the powerful house of Luxembourg dynasty. But it was in the Industrial Revolution that the Grand Duchy's underground treasure trough revealed its actual value as economies transitioned from farms to factories. 
As steel displaced wood and iron for construction and machinery, canny industrialists realized Luxembourg's iron-rich lands put them in a prime position. Families like the Metzis raced to build the first blast furnaces capable of forging the once useless buried rock into lucrative steel. A breakthrough came in 1877 when Englishman Sidney Gilchrist Thomas invented the Thomas process to remove impurities from iron ore, finally allowing Luxembourg's mills to produce premium steel demanded globally. Fueled by this innovation, Luxembourg's steel boom exploded. Sleepy agricultural villages rapidly transformed into smog-choked industrial powerhouses packed with fire-belching foundries and furnaces operating around the clock. Fortunes grow as each ton of steel poured, propelling upstarts like the Metzis from minor nobility into captains of Luxembourg's blossoming steel industry. Fueled by this metallurgic innovation, Luxembourg's steel boom went into full blast. Forged in Steel – The Economic Backbone the rise of Luxembourg's steel industry was more than just a technological marvel. It was the beating heart that propelled the nation's economic transformation. What began as the discovery of iron-rich veins beneath unassuming soil evolved into a powerhouse that reshaped the very fabric of the country's society and fortunes. In the 19th century, as the Industrial Revolution swept across Europe, Luxembourg found itself perfectly positioned to capitalize on the insatiable demand for steel. The introduction of English metallurgy techniques in 1876 and the subsequent founding of the Arbit Company in 1911 marked a pivotal turning point igniting a steel boom that would reverberate through generations. As new steel mills sprouted like mushrooms across the landscape, once sleepy agricultural villages were transformed into bustling industrial hubs. The call for labor was answered by a steady stream of workers flocking from the countryside, exchanging the back-breaking toil of the fields for the promise of steady wages and a better life in the factory towns. By the early 20th century, the steel industry had become an economic juggernaut, employing over 50,000 people, a staggering figure for a nation of Luxembourg's size. The clang of hammers and the roar of furnaces became the soundtrack of a country forging its path to prosperity one ton of steel at a time. The economic impact of this industrial revolution was profound. Luxembourg's GDP skyrocketed, propelling the nation from a largely agrarian society to a manufacturing powerhouse almost overnight. The steel sector became the backbone of the economy, providing not only employment but also a steady stream of export revenue that filled the government's coffers and fueled investment in infrastructure and public services. But the steel industry's influence extended far beyond mere economics. It shaped the very identity of the Luxembourgish people, instilling a sense of pride and resilience that would carry them through even the darkest of times. The workers who toiled in the mills and foundries were not just laborers. They were the embodiment of the nation's determination to rise above its humble beginnings and stake its claim on the global stage. As the decades passed, the steel industry remained a driving force in Luxembourg's economy, adapting to changing market conditions and technological advancements. Government intervention and strategic restructuring ensured that the sector remained competitive even as new players emerged on the global stage. The formation of Arbed and its subsequent mergers with Acerelia, Usenor, and eventually Metal Steel solidified Luxembourg's position as a steel powerhouse. ArcelorMittal, the behemoth that emerged, became the world's largest steel producer with its roots firmly planted in the iron-rich soil of the Grand Duchy. While the steel industry's dominance may have waned in recent decades, its impact on Luxembourg's economic and cultural fabric remains indelible. The precision, attention to detail, and unwavering work ethic forged in the fires of the steel mills became ingrained in the national character, paving the way for the country's transition to a diversified, knowledge-based economy. The money powerhouse emerges. As the booming steel factories went quiet and production became much cheaper in other countries like China, Luxembourg boldly shifted its economic focus to the shiny world of banking and finance. The smart leaders of this small nation realized their home market was way too tiny to keep growing for the long run, so they hatched an ambitious plan to turn Luxembourg into a major global money hub. Lucky for them, Luxembourg had some huge advantages working in its favor. It enjoyed steady political calm, a cutting-edge communications network, and a talented workforce fluent in multiple languages to serve international clients. This powerful mix proved irresistible to the elite global banks. Soon, prestigious firms from economic giants like Germany, Scandinavia, Japan, and the USA were scrambling to set up operations in Luxembourg. 
Over the following decades, an absolute banking empire took shape, employing a massive 50,000 people dedicated to the complex arts of finance and investment. Luxembourg's ironclad commitment to bank secrecy and its top-notch skills in handling cross-border money made it a trusted safe haven for the world's wealth. By 2012, this relentless pursuit of excellence had rocketed Luxembourg to the number 10 spot in Europe for clean governance and transparency. The tax gambit pays off. But banking was just one side of Luxembourg's economic genius. In a parallel move, this astute nation cultivated a sizzling reputation as a low-tax paradise for multinational megacorporations hungry to shrink their tax bills. The game-changing 1929 Holding Company Act opened up unparalleled opportunities for tax avoidance, rapidly attracting a vast network of lawyers, bankers, and political insiders. This well-connected elite meticulously constructed an intricate web of special rules, legal loopholes, and shell corporations, all explicitly designed to help companies drastically reduce their tax loads. This low-tax sweet spot proved insanely popular, as over a staggering 9,000 holding companies rushed to set up shop in Luxembourg. They feverishly rerouted their profits through the nation's lax tax system, triggering a tidal wave of investment as corporations eagerly cashed in on the chance to slash their tax rates. Luxembourg's economic clout on the world stage soared. The Reckoning and Reform But Luxembourg's growing stature as a tax haven for corporate cash didn't escape the watchful global eye for long. In 2009, the powerful G20 group of economic heavyweights placed Luxembourg squarely on its grey list of nations with questionable banking setups, sounding alarms over its famously secretive banking laws and mounting reputation as a corporate tax shelter. Facing intense international pressure, Luxembourg knew it had to get its house in order. It overhauled its outdated tax rulebook to fall in line with strict European Union regulations. And in the biggest shakeup, Luxembourg's iconic 1929 Holding Company Act, the prized cornerstone of its corporate tax avoiding powers, was abruptly repealed in 2020 for violating EU rules against illegal state aid. While these reforms ushered in much-needed transparency, Luxembourg's status as a world-class financial superpower remained rock-solid. In 2019's rankings of competitive financial hubs, it claimed an impressive 25th place globally and a stellar third in Europe, trailing only the banking titans of London and Zurich. Although concerns lingered over its cozy corporate tax policies, Luxembourg credited its ongoing prosperity to its trio of core strengths, steadfast political stability, a multilingual workforce of finance wizards, and unrivaled expertise in the high-stakes game of international money flows. The small nation's role as lord of the finance realm showed no signs of abating. Effects of the policies on the economy these days, unemployment in Luxembourg is super low at less than 5% of the population. This ultra-tight labor market has a huge positive impact on the economy, which can be credited to Luxembourg's business-friendly tax policies. The government actively works to strengthen other economic sectors beyond just finance to boost incomes across the board. A big part of Luxembourg's winning formula lies in its ideal strategic position, steady political stability, seamless connections to other European hubs, a multilingual workforce of finance experts, and a tradition of banking secrecy and cross-border money management prowess. This potent combination has turbocharged the growth of the country's financial industry. But the paths to wealth in Luxembourg don't end there. Being a tiny nation actually works in its favor in some surprising ways. With the country's small size, the government can avoid massive spending on public infrastructure like highways. And with just an 800-person military force, Luxembourg skips the heavy cost of maintaining a large army. Instead of blowing money there, the government can focus on keeping taxes appealingly low and cultivating an investor-friendly financial environment. This tax-friendly approach is a key lure for global corporations looking to legally reduce their tax exposure. Major players like eBay and Skype have shrewdly established their European headquarters right in Luxembourg City, the nation's capital. By routing operations through Luxembourg's low-tax system instead of their actual home countries, these giants can lawfully sidestep significantly higher tax obligations, essentially a form of legal tax avoidance. Of course, the Luxembourg government isn't about to bite the hand that feeds it. So, in exchange for luring in these elite multinationals, it's been proactively cutting taxes for smaller businesses too. The goal is to cultivate an ecosystem that attracts more innovative tech startups and entrepreneurs to its shores. While the low tax rates applied to megacorporations' huge profits may seem like small change, they collectively translate into a massive income stream for Luxembourg's public coffers. 
In many ways, Luxembourg has cleverly positioned itself as an economic parasite of sorts, achieving remarkable progress by offering the world's biggest businesses uniquely attractive labor pools, tax rates and operating costs that other countries simply can't match. The other side of the coin. While Luxembourg has brilliantly engineered its financial and corporate tax policies into an economic golden goose, there's another side to the story that deserves a closer look. The immigrant workforce windfall. Despite being the smallest nation in the entire European Union, Luxembourg harbors a massive secret weapon. It has the highest share of immigrant workers in all of Europe. A staggering 160,000 people commute into the country every morning from neighboring France, Germany and Belgium. They create wealth in Luxembourg, then return home in the evening. This unmistakable immigrant workforce advantage allows Luxembourg to reap the benefits of their labor while conveniently avoiding costs for things like education, healthcare and social services. Those obligations fall squarely on the workers' home countries instead of straining Luxembourg's public finances. Even in retirement, these immigrant workers continue indirectly subsidizing Luxembourg's economy. Their pension benefits get dispersed by their home nations rather than coming out of the Luxembourg government's pocket. It's a situation that epitomizes the adage of having your cake and eating it too. The thorny issue of tax sharing. Unsurprisingly, this lopsided system hasn't earned Luxembourg many friends among its neighbors. Despite lavishly profiting from the tax dollars of tens of thousands of French, Belgian and German workers, the Luxembourg government steadfastly refuses to share any of those revenues with the local economies that house them. This go-it-alone tax hoarding has exacerbated tensions with border communities settled with the costs of roadway maintenance, public transit and other infrastructure needs stemming from the daily worker influxes. Many see it as a classic case of Luxembourg reaping excessive rewards while passing the burdens on to others. The Cloudy World of Financial Secrecy Luxembourg's financial privacy laws have also attracted scrutiny over potential misuse. As one high-profile example illustrates, a seemingly legitimate bank can still find itself ensnared in money laundering scandals across borders. In 1993, Bank Lou, a respected European bank with no official US presence at the time, was convicted in a California court of laundering Colombian drug money totaling over 2 million. How? By accepting a stream of cash deposits slightly below the 10,000 reporting threshold that triggers additional US anti-money laundering oversight. While Bank Lou returned the illicit funds to both US and Luxembourg authorities, the case underscored how the veil of banking secrecy can enable bad actors to exploit regulatory gaps across jurisdictions. It's a looming issue Luxembourg has yet to fully resolve. For all its economic ingenuity, Luxembourg's wealth-generating machine continues courting controversy from critics, accusing it of self-interest at the expense of its neighbors. Only time will tell if this corporate utopia's benefits ultimately outweigh the mounting costs of sustaining such an ambitious economic paradigm.